In July 2018, Amazon forecast strong fall sales, while posting a second quarter profit that was double Wall Street targets, thanks to the retailer's newer and higher earning business models, including cloud computing and advertising. So, what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is an information technology paradigm. Cloud computing automatically splits huge computing processing routines into countless smaller sub-programs, which can execute across multiple networks simultaneously and semi-autonomously. After these programs and their sub-programs search, compile and analyse the vast store of internet information that we freely provide, the processed results are sent back to the subscriber companies which pay for these services. With this technology, network service providers can process tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of pieces of information in a matter of seconds, thus achieving network service results in almost real time. This is a new approach, a divide and conquer information capability and capacity that is just as powerful as the supercomputers of previous days. In those early days of computing, that area of mini-frame computers that very few people had access to, expensive machines were locked away in secure, secret houses. That was an era of IT dictatorship, with information processing techniques available only to those very few people who knew how to exploit and then monopolise the uses and capabilities of IT. With the invention of the personal computer, this IT network has entered thousands of households. The general public can now enjoy the conveniences brought by IT advances, which are poorly understood by most of them. New gadgets and services become available almost every day. Think of Alexa, Siri, smart houses, smart appliances. You can now turn on your Instapot from your office, remotely see what's in your refrigerator, and even track how effective your daily toothbrushing habits are. The personal computer revolution can also be said to be a revolution in the democratization of IT. It is readily available and very cheap. Although computing resources are available to everyone, such computing resources and capabilities are limited by the providers. The computation power is monopolised in the hands of the big companies, such as Google, Microsoft, IBM, Amazon and Dell. Today, this era of cloud computing is setting off yet another wave of IT democratization. Through cloud computing, which is a great example of the economy of sharing, millions of people can enjoy large computation power at low cost. Along with the increasing demand, the unit cost of access will become even cheaper in the future. For example, nowadays, many small companies can utilise hundreds of machines to evaluate real-time results of ongoing sales or marketing campaigns. This was unthinkable before. The cloud service, which has opened up its audio and video transmission and processing capabilities, now allows ordinary developers to create a live streaming app that supports hundreds of millions of users in just a week. Facial recognition, which is used to be a lab technology, is now easily accessible to ordinary developers and users through APIs. Artificial intelligence, machine learning and so on. These frontier technologies of today will also be open to the wider public, the benefits of cloud computing. When, and as that happens, cloud computing will set off a new wave of IT democratization, revolutionary boosting equality, accessibility and flexibility to everyone with an internet connection, which today is becoming global in scope. For enterprise customers, the cloud computing platform is not only a computing service, but also the output window for commercial activity. For example, companies operating on the Microsoft Azure network can easily access resources available in Microsoft Office software data management and digital content. But it also means that the company needs to put the important operation data into that cloud platform as the lack of any data migration may impact the smooth operation of the business. In this case, once the company starts using a particular cloud service, it will generally be tied to their cloud provider. 
Amazon's cloud computing business, known as AWS, started to meet the needs of its IT resources to support its e-commerce activities, but the company is now selling capacity whenever the resources sit idle. AWS is now the world's largest market player among cloud computing vendors. The global market for common cloud services was $209.2 billion in 2016 and is expected to reach $383.3 billion by 2020, according to Gartner's Diamond Forecast. So, how do we explain the rapid development of cloud computing? What are the economic rationalities behind it? First of all, the scale effect. The scale effect refers to the increase in economic benefits, which is brought about by the expansion of production scale, and is actually one of the most common advantages of the internet giants. Its advantages are number 1. Reduced unit cost. With the establishment of AWS Data Center, fixed costs become controllable. With an increase in the number of users, the increase of variable costs become marginal. The more users joining the system, the lower the average fixed cost per service. Of course, with the expansion and economy of scale, issues such as overload and congestion have to be met side-by-side advances in data center technology. Cloud providers need to continuously invest in new data centers, training in the technological advances for the technicians and systems management teams to be capable of ensuring an ongoing smooth operation and optimal performance. Number two, strong purchasing power, low investment cost. Proponents of the cost advantages of public cloud computing argue that cloud services should be provided gratis by the larger vendors. At a recent corporate AWS conference, Amazon CTO Werner Bowles pointed out that Amazon had bought into a huge number of servers devoted to cloud technology at one time and was getting a correspondingly huge discount as a result. In addition, the purchase of devices especially designed for users save unnecessary technical integration, thus making the technology as simple and convenient as plugging into a USB port. Also, vendors who provide common cloud services operate in a highly automated environment, further reducing the cost of human resources in cloud technology. Number three, efficient technical improvement capability. Enterprise scale technologies help to accumulate knowledge and diversify those risks inherent in any technological progress. The larger the scale, the larger the user base, the more diversified customer demands are, resulting in an increased and ongoing demand for technological innovation. With a large customer base and the capability to oversee their entire market share, cloud providers are able to effectively iterate and update their technology capabilities to meet the future needs of their clients, while still providing propriety systems which attempt to lock their customers into their sole source approach. Besides the scale effect, there is another economic effect, the long tail effect, as shown in the chart below. A very small number of individuals on the horizontal axis attribute to a very high unit value on the vertical axis. While individuals with very low unit values account for the vast majority of the total, the portion of the symmetric curve near the longitudinal axis is called the tall head, while the part near the horizontal axis is called the long tail. The term long tail effect emphasizes the commercial value of those individuals who account for the vast majority of data. Their individual values are extremely low, but the total value of this long tail cannot be underestimated. Because of the development of internet and IT technology, the average cost of delivering products and services has been significantly reduced. Along with the expansion of cloud service providers, the market demand for cloud computing is sharply expanding. On the one hand, more and more enterprises are demanding personalised products and services, while on the other hand, the offer of standardised services to more enterprises has and is proving to be a stable, low-cost business service model. Cloud service providers can seize the long-tail effect and make huge profits from businesses that need personalised service, while, because of the reduction in search cost, Most enterprises are more inclined to use public cloud services. Finally, the network effect. 
The simplified explanation is that the network effects occur when a company's products or services become more valuable as a result of increased usage. Many Silicon Valley unicorns are fast-growing enterprises due to the rapid growth in users of their new services. But few of them are able to retain long-term paid users because the costs are just too high. For traditional companies, as the market becomes saturated, vendor acquisition application costs will drop further. However, for companies with their own networking capabilities, the reverse is true. As the network continues to expand, user acquisition costs remain the same or can even decline. In 1994, when the internet was just developing, the contribution of the network effect to the value creation of technology companies was almost 70%. A company with network effects usually has these advantages. Number one, it grows even faster after it reaches to its scale threshold. Number two, monopolies bring pricing power, which allows for commission growth. And number three, once established, the service typically requires low ongoing maintenance and operating costs. Companies like Amazon and Microsoft are typical beneficiaries of network effects. Today, they are successfully promoting their cloud services to enterprises and further integrating their existing products, services and even customer bases through their participation. A one-stop shop with frequent participation bonuses. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next one, we'll talk about the future of cloud computing and potential challenges for businesses as they make the transformation to the cloud. Stay tuned.